Thank you. Thank you, uh, Vijay Kumar. Uh, Vijay Kumar, I congratulate you for uh, organizing this, and uh, we have got still some people on the, in, the, in the hall. Uh, I'm very proud of him because uh, not only that he's a colleague, but he's also, I'm one of his teachers, I must say that. <laughs> So he wanted me to talk about remission in type 2 diabetes and I thought I'll put it as basics and trials because we have some data on uh, remission and I will be discussing with you uh, from the original data. Well, the first we'll talk, go through some of the basics and for this I looked up uh, Matthew, Matt Riddle's uh, publication Diabetes Care which was the result of a Adversary Committee on Remission. So what is the definition of remission in type 2 diabetes? It's improvement of glucose levels into the normal range can occur in some people with diabetes when you start treating them. It can be sometimes spontaneous regression, but most of the time, after medical interventions, and in some cases can persist after withdrawal of the anti-diabetic agents. Such sustained improvement may be occurring more often right, right now because we have more efficient drugs. However, the terminology for describing this process and objective measures for defining it are not well established and the long-term benefits of remission is not well understood. Okay, now we're talking about terminology. We've been discussing about many things and there have been papers talking different terminologies. Uh, the terms resolution, reversal, remission and cure, each have been used to describe a favorable outcome of interventions resulting in a disease-free status. But the point is, can there be a disease-free status at all? The term reversal is used to describe the process of returning to glucose levels below those diagnostic of diabetes, but it should not be equated with a state of remission. The term cure seems especially problematic in suggesting that all aspects of the condition are now normalized and no clinical follow-up or further management will be needed, and that is misleading. Uh, because cure is hoped for outcome, as in cancer patients, you can, okay, there's a definition of cure. The term should be avoided in the context of type 2 diabetes for many reasons. So the expert panel concluded that we must call it diabetes remission and not even reversal. What is the criteria for remission? HPA1C below the level currently used for diagnosis of diabetes, which is below 6.5 and remaining at the level of at least that level for three months without continuation of anti-hyperglycemic agents. You can also use fasting plasma glucose lower than 126. Testing two-hour plasma glucose following a 75-gram glucose load or a challenge is more problematic because the high variability between repeated measurements. So the ADA expert group actually concluded HPA1C below 6.5 for more than three months should be the criteria. Uh, what are the clinical and uh, physiological considerations? Short-term, early, aggressive pharmacological therapy can sometimes restore nearly normal glycemic control. I'm sure you would have had experience of treating patients when you have blood sugars of 300 with HV1C of 11.5 coming to you, and then you start treatment. Within two, three months, you will see that they have become normal glycemic. That's because you're reversing what is called glucose toxicity, allowing therapy to be withdrawn. Especially the new classes of drugs, like what we have been discussing so far, have made it possible because we can use them pretty early in the natural history of type 2 diabetes without causing hypoglycemia. Now, there are a number of categories of remission, for those who want to know. Partial remission, if remission sustains for at least one year. Complete remission for more than one year. Prolonged remission is called because it's more than five years. What are the interventions? There are many interventions you can do if there are obese people, weight loss and management, and I'm going to give you 
a study on that. Bariatric surgery is another intervention which can cause remission. Early intensive therapy and treatment with agents, especially like GLP-1 analogs and uh, weight loss. The duration is absolutely very, very different in many studies and of the benefits of remission are still not known. The extended duration of a remission induced by various interventions still not well defined. And the long-term effects of remission and no mortality and cardiovascular benefits are not yet known. Now I'm going to give you studies on the remission. And there are two hyperglycemic states clinically that you see. One is pre-diabetes and the other one is diabetes. The reason I'm telling about pre-diabetes is because we have original data in India about pre-diabetes, as well as for diabetes, of course. And in pre-diabetes, you have early abnormalities, and you will actually study the changes in pathophysiology for the reversal. For this, I'm not going to refer to the Indian Diabetes Prevention Program, which was actually published as early as 2006, where we studied different, and what we found is in the four arms of the study, the cumulative incidence of diabetes was significantly high in the control group, while it was almost 40 to 30 percent, 39 percent in the intervention group. And there was a relative risk reduction of diabetes at the end of three years by almost 30 percent, which was significant. Now, what did you learn from this is that there are some people who remitted, who became normal from IGT, and that is about 21 percent, while 44 percent developed diabetes. So now if you look at and then at that point, in 2006, we called it remission of pre-diabetes. What I'm going to show you now is the paper we published in 2009 in the American Diabetes Care Journal, changes in insulin secretion and insulin resistance in those who remitted to normal glycemia. And what happened was, as you on the left-hand side, you have the insulin secretion called the delta Ig, which did not change at all. On the other hand, insulin resistance, which is measured by home IR, showed significant decrease, which means that the mechanism of remission was by improvement in insulin resistance, while insulin secretion did not change. There is also, we did explorative analysis to see whether early improvement can predict diabetes. And this paper again was published in 2014, looking at our, our second prevention trial in which you find that there's a 36% relative risk reduction by lifestyle modification. And at the end of six months, there are a number of people who became normal. And we looked at what happened to those people who became normal at the end of six months compared to those people who did not become normal. And we find that the risk of diabetes was significantly low in those who were remitted. So what happens is the normal glycemia or remission in pre-diabetes, if it occurs early, then you have an advantage. In fact, what happens is there will be a 75% relative risk reduction in the risk of diabetes within two years if you remitted very early. The next thing is whether there is long-term sustainability of this, and that, that was again studied in our own. After the trial was over, we were actually very fortunate to get that the people after three years and that means after five years of intervention. And we found that it continued to have remission up to five years. So you have what is called the post-trial or post-intervention effect up to two years, which can actually go up to five years. Now we are going to go for remission in diabetes, which will be more interesting for you. I'm going to give you a surprise, because I looked at the literature and it's going through studies on remission in diabetes. And you will be surprised to see the next slide. And one of the first papers published on remission in type 2 diabetes was published in 1987. And look at the authors. <clears throat> this was actually published in 1987 in the Diabetes Journal in Thailand because I went and presented this paper in the first epidemiology meeting of Southeast Asia. That was held in Bangkok in 1986, and it was published in 1987. But it is interesting. What we published that day still remains true even today. 
And what does he, this is the study, you know, I, I couldn't make slides from this, but I just took the picture. What we found was that people who lost weight remitted. And there is again later published from the UK, and I'm going to tell you that study a little later. Their direct study by Roy Taylor and group in the United Kingdom. And what you can see is as increased number of, the amount of weight lost, there is a better chance of remission. But more importantly, the period of remission varied from one to 10 years. Some of them remitted back to diabetes. So I'm sure that you will know that people are advertising for reversal of diabetes. It can definitely occur. And I told you the mechanism. But you can actually go back and go back to diabetes. And that is what's shown here. And that in 15 patients, the period of remission was more than four years. In five patients, recurrence of diabetes was noted. The plasma glucose again went back. So we had a very primitive tools at that. Of course, we looked at the insulin values and published insulin values in a separate paper. So remission is possible in type 2 diabetes. And we, first, we were the first to publish in 1987 uh, from the, from when Dr. Vishwanathan was alive at the time. The next big revolution happened and talked about reversal of diabetes was from this particular study from Roy, Roy Taylor's group from the United Kingdom where they did what is called diabetes remission clinical trial called the direct study where 290, about 300 people were randomized into two groups in the primary health care system in the United Kingdom and they took people who were actually overweight. Now type 2 diabetes with pre up to 6 years, BMI between 27 to 45. And what is the end point? They wanted them to lose weight up to 15 kilograms in one year. So they were giving them packets of food, not giving them normal food. Very, very artificial way of it. They made them lose weight. And what happened? Look at this. On the left, uh, on the first one, the weight loss of more than 50 kilograms occurred in 24% of people, and even among them, 46% became normal. So they got out of diabetes, naturally. Exactly what we've shown in 1987. And drugs were withdrawn for 74%. And then they called reversal of diabetes or remission in diabetes. So type 2 diabetes can be reversed by weight loss with the help of an evidence-based structured weight management program very true in people who are very much overweight. And of course, they found that almost half of patients in the intervention group showed remission of diabetes and were off anti-diabetic medications. After Roy Taylor published that, he went through the literature, and the British Medical Journal wanted to publish a review on nutritional basis of type 2 remission, and they wanted international authorship. And I was lucky to be invited to be a part of this particular review article, which was published in British Medical Journal 2021, looking into the data from all over the world, see how. And in this, I'm going to give you the exact mechanism of remission, how it occurs. And that is called the twin cycle hypothesis, which we wrote in this paper, which shows you the pathophysiology of remission. Now, what is shown on the left-hand side is that there's a lot of fat in people who are overweight and type 2 diabetes. And there's increased liver fat, increased liver fat export, and there is pancreatic fat, and there is decreased beta cell function. And in remission, what happens is you remove the fat, decrease the liver fat, decrease the liver fat export, decrease the pancreatic fat, and improve the beta cell function. So vicious cycles of fat accumulation in the liver and the pancreas lead to the development of type 2 diabetes over at least, at least a decade. And major calorie restriction can reverse that and reduce glucose toxicity. However, please look at the last line. Some individuals remain in remission for many years provided weight is not regained. That is the catch, unfortunately. Because none of the trials doing lifestyle modification for weight loss has shown sustained weight reduction at all. There have been meta-analysis of more than 50 trials. So I want to just give, leave you with a take-home message. 
Improving beta cell function type 2 diabetes, is it a fallacy or not? The follow-up study of beta cell function and insulin resistance in the Indian diabetes prevention trial, which is very important, because there the weight loss was not as much as what you found in the UK direct study. That prevention was facilitated by improvement in insulin resistance and not by improvement in beta cell function. Therefore, it is clear that even a pre-diabetic stage, recovery of beta cell function to absolute normal is almost impossible. At the onset of type 2 diabetes, those individuals with extreme insulin resistance and extreme obesity can achieve normal glycemia by drastic weight reduction and improvement in insulin resistance, including bariatric surgery. Removal of toxicity, glucose toxicity improves insulin output. And that you can see even in your own patients. And but I don't know whether you would have read Perret's articles on this from Belgium, which shown that you can treat people with type 2 diabetes when they have this florid diabetes. And you'll find that after a year, you may be able to withdraw the drugs completely. And unfortunately, in India, that is the time some of them will be going for native medicines. And then you'll say, well, my diabetes is cured because of native medicine, not because of your medicine that I'm talking. However, it's unlikely that after the onset of florid diabetes, recurve of beta cell can be achieved to sustain the mission for a long time. If patients relapse and gain weight again, hyperglycemia returns, and remission cannot be permanent or considered a cure for diabetes. Never say cure. I'm sure there are people in trouble who have actually claimed they have cure from native medicines. Thank you.